So I actually had a whole video planned based on the whole topic of vertical video and shooting vertical video with your S5 and what the most uh, sort of time effective way to do that is. And of course, a lot of people have always said that if you're shooting vertical video with the S5, then switch to the anamorphic 4x3 mode. And I had a video plan where I said that, but after I actually tested it, so shooting in 16x9 and also in the anamorphic 4x3 mode with both the S5 and the S1, that I can now tell you that that's actually a lie. You shouldn't really be doing that because you actually get a wider field of view in a 16 by nine when you crop down to vertical than what you would with the four by three. Um, and I think the reason why this is, is because people have been thinking that the four by three is almost like an open gate sort of setting on the S5, when actually it's not. It crops in like an APS-C sensor and then four by three from there. At least that's what it says in the menu because when you look it says MOV or um, it will say like MOV then APS-C in the actual like, box next to where you're selecting what recording uh, mode you're in. So to prove to you guys that I'm not lying about this, I've opened up a vertical video timeline inside of Final Cut. And as you can see here in the information tab, uh, it's 2160 by 3840, which of course is nine by 16. And I've gone ahead and I've dropped some clips on there that have been shot both in anamorphic four by three and in the normal 16 by nine, all 4K 25P. So if I just click on this clip here, just to show you guys, this one is anamorphic 3328 by 2496. And then the one next to it, that, as you can see, is 3840 by 2160. And all the clips have been arranged this way, so the first clip of each example will be the anamorphic, and then the second is going to be the 16 by nine. So just take a look here, guys. So here is the anamorphic four by three. Just get an idea of the sort of field of view you're getting. And then this is a 16 by nine. So as you can see, it's a lot wider with a 16 by nine, even when you are cropping into nine by 16. So that just subsequently proves that 16 by nine is actually better for vertical nine by 16 content. If you didn't want to, of course, turn your camera around and film vertically, um, you know, in the first place. And then here's the next example. So again, this is the anamorphic four by three. And then that is your 16 by nine. And what I've done here, guys, by the way, just to show you, I've just changed um, each clip, uh, the spatial conform on each clip to fill. So as you can see, it says fill. And if I was to go fit, you can see that that is in fact a four by three square. And if I do the same for the 16 by nine one, just to show that I'm not cheating, this one, press fit, you get your 16 by nine um, video there. So hitting fill just basically fills up the nine by 16 frame. And that's normally how I edit for vertical video. So yeah, as you guys can see, there's no trickery going on here. Nothing weird. It's just 16 by nine is better for uh, vertical video video and that's you know there you go unless i'm doing something wrong here guys but honestly i don't think that i am because i've trawled through the menus so many times on these cameras and i've never seen anything else but that anamorphic 4x3 on the s5 or when you're on the s1 all of the anamorphic mode sharp in just the record frame rate settings as opposed to its own separate menu and um, you know i've switched between loads of them 25p 50p all that sort of stuff and from what i can see the 4x3 anamorphic mode is cropped and not just at the sides, but cropped also at the bottom and the top as well. So 16x9 genuinely is the best thing to record on if you didn't want to get vertical video as well as 16x9 video. But of course, if you're just shooting vertical video, then you might as well just that camera around to the side, even though it's really annoying and uncomfortable to film vertically. If that's the only way that you're, or the only sort of video you wanna get from it is vertical, then of course that's gonna be the most um, optimized for that sort of use case. So yeah, I hope you guys found this video insightful somewhat. Of course, it was a massive surprise to me when I tested this out. So hopefully I've saved you, you know, a bunch of aggro by telling you this. And yeah, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, because I do make a lot of content here around the Panasonic L mount ecosystem, all that sort of stuff. So if that's your vibe, then this channel will be for you. So yeah, thanks again for watching and hopefully I shall see you in the next one.